Adam Nacco with Lancaster Research New Zealand. Uh, as a former uh, employee of the US EPA's Climate Change Office under both Bush and um, Obama administration, I want to thank Louise for reminding me of all the hard hours that I spent. <laughs> she resulted in very little uh, legislation or implementation. But with that, I'm interested in what Frank was talking about, how there's too much uncertainty on the bio sequestration side. Actually, in the US case, one of the biggest limitations to perhaps getting some of what we assume to be the, 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 the key agricultural states on board was the fact that we had this uncertainty in ag-based sequestration and other ag-based policies that then did not allow them to get actually the votes necessary for the legislation to pass. So given this and in, in that you do have this, you know, the, the current uh, ministry has the idea that we're going to set in Australia at least a 5% reduction and you want to limit prices, what do you expect the political climate to be if you can't basically put in as many options as possible to keep that price relatively low. So this might be a combination of Frank and Louise to, to address that. I think it's more states. <laughs> <laughs> so referring to old cats, I used to run a projection there in, in, in part of climate change. So, so the, uh, Australian agriculture is really variable, and so there's a, there's a huge difference between um, uh, tree-based uh, sequestration and soil-based sequestration in Australia. Because uh, when you come to a drought, you just lose all the carbon. Uh, and so I think Frank's suggestion of sort of a two-tier scheme uh, about a, a non-binding uh, uh, land-based carbon uh, pledge is a really interesting one to explore. Because then the Australian government, knowing that it's in our international interest, uh, our national interest to promote sort of global action, diverse currencies of action, blah, blah, blah. Now, they could offer sort of a floor price arrangement. You know, we'll pay five bucks or 10 bucks. There's lots of people. Um, who think they can do it for that uh, on a best efforts basis. So it's sort of a, it would be an input or a technology binding agreement that, you know, if you do these things, we'll pay you X. We won't even bother measuring it. We'll make some estimates so we can claim the international. And you could do that. But Australia would, it would be very, very risky. I mean, the fluxes out of agriculture are occasionally almost as much as all our industrial emissions. I mean, this is a non-trivial risk for the Australian government to bear. And so that two-tier system allows us to do things that the science is, says is worthwhile without taking on a whole lot of uh, downside risk at the same time. So I think that's worth pursuing. Okay, so I'll take two more. John. Uh, my question is for Louise. The, the, the original uh, Kyoto Agreement was on an emissions trading scheme. Frank's told us some interesting stories about why tax might make more sense. What's your feeling about the possibility of a harmonised tax versus payable permits has been the way through. Look, my opinion doesn't matter in the slightest. It's what comes out of that MPCCC. It's that combination of ministers that are discussing this in government at the moment. The most important thing, whatever form it takes, whatever form the Australian government can get agreement to, is that somehow that use of carbon is costed. And we won't get a permit scheme. It just doesn't happen in the world. We'll get what we can get, the combination of the opposition and the Greens and the government to agree to sooner rather than later. So I'm sorry I can't say anything more intelligent than that, but I've got my fingers crossed. No, I'll press you a bit further, Louise, on this. Uh, this agricultural economists of a certain age here have a uh, quite a bit of experience on uh, trade law quotas on various things. And uh, my observation is that none of them think that there will ever be an, international, uh, an uncorrupted international uh, trading permit uh, uh, market in, in, in permits, um, uh, and, and, and it's difficult to have a national one. Uh, is, is what can I say? The world isn't sweet. <laughs> well, and it isn't. So what are we going to do about that? Yeah. Nothing. Uh, you live with it. You come up with you know whatever verification okay. schemes you can. But the world is not sweet, and that's why we don't have. You know, we have to come up with the best thing you can that includes everyone from Ponape to Terry Terry Del Fuego, you know. Get yeah. real. Yeah. <laughs> but, but if what you're talking about is a global sort of harmonised price arrangement, uh, it's essentially what you're doing then, the, the key thing that does in political economy terms is it precludes international transfers. Okay? And the reality, uh, I mean, the one thing that is gold standard in the agreement is the notion of common but differentiated obligations. You're not going to get you know, half the world, the developing countries who will soon be much more than, you know, significantly more than half the emissions, they're not going to be playing at the same point on the cost curve that advanced countries are going to play. 
So, so, so in, in the global assessments, the modelling suggests that you know, up to a third, at least 20% of global abatement has to be funded through resource transfers. You can only do that through permanent markets. So a harmonised tax just doesn't, doesn't match the world we live in, regardless of our view about sort of price versus quantity in an ideal first best world. Thanks. Last one. John. Just to briefly give the case for a straight carbon tax in Australia's current circumstances, I think the political economy is radically different simply because <coughs> we're starting from scratch instead of starting from the CPRS. In terms of transition, uh, it doesn't say anything about the design here. I mean, I'll, this would be as an explicitly short run measure. If transitional role would be the tax would be the effective floor price in a scheme whose, whose form could then be left entirely worked out. Quick, easy, people un and people would understand that the tax is going to be passed through and that therefore the appropriate target for compensation is households, not, uh, not women, sorry. So I guess it seems to me, you know, and I mean, I'm absolutely reversing my position based on, based on the change of circumstances, that, that the way we should go is a low carbon tax with an explicit saying this is our short run policy and we'll wait and see. You know, we still, still want trade, uh, emissions trading scheme. I think the terms of the way things are going anyway, John. But